it doesn't matter what you play, it's not going to make you more money or less money. It's, I mean, I can go out one hour and play and make something really good and go out the next hour and make nothing playing the same repertoire. Okay, on a lovely sunny day in Hobart, everybody's smiling. Even the girls are smiling. Well, some of the girls. I feel fine here in Hobart. Got to look before you leap. Get run over by a taxi. I got a smile when we meet. Found me a place to play. The old police only said, hey, folks, you better keep smiling all day. I'm a one-man band. Nobody knows nor understands. Anybody out there have a smile for them? The one-man band. Three days now, haven't eaten and talked. My mind will get so thin. Well, in the early years, when I first started, I was just about seven or eight years old. Les Paul was my big inspiration. I met him when I was nine, and then Chet Atkins, and then you had the, the Kingston Trio and Peter, Paul and Mary for folk music, which I got into, which I like. In the early morning rain With a dollar in my hand And an aching in my heart And my pockets full of My problem when I was a kid was I used to get motion sickness. And no matter what, uh, automobile, airplane, train, boat, whatever bus. And we went to some friends of my parents, and uh, they had their parents there, so the grandparents were there, Italian. And after the meal, the elderly woman came out and she started reading everybody's palm. And when she came to me, she looked at my palm and she said that, oh, when you're older teenager, you're going to join the military and you're going to start traveling. Well, after we left the house, we, my mom and dad and my brother and I, we all just broke up laughing. So, pff, you know, he's, he's with his head out the window, heaving his guts out all the time. So we just gave it a miss. But anyway, strangely enough, when I turned 17, I joined the, the Navy and I've been traveling ever since. We played Germany, France, England, Holland, Denmark, Sweden, Norway, Finland and most of the major cities in those countries. We used to, like for Germany example, we come and we play in Kiel. We go over to, uh, to Hanover, down to Dortmund, Domstadt, Heidelberg, Ulm, München, Bern, Zurich, and uh, play, play in Vienna, uh, Innsbruck, uh, places through Spain, Italy, you know, Rome, Naples, England, all the way up through the center of England, play Cornwall, Devon, you play Birmingham, you play Hales Owen, you play Devonport, you play, uh, I can't remember some of those names now, all the small towns. But you know, play all those places in there. Never, I never played London, because London was always too crowded with people. So I go to Richmond or to Strawberry Hill or Twickenham or uh, some other place that's outside, you know. Uh, like, for example, I went to, uh, to South Africa and I thought, oh, I, you know, what am I going to do? I said, well, I'll, I'll do what I do and see what happens. And strangely enough, the people were singing the Beatles songs, they were singing the, the uh, Everly Brothers songs, they were singing the Elvis Presley songs right along with you, and they were dancing, so people know the music. Yeah, 
you've got to face your audience, look at them, and uh, try and make them smile and be happy. Enjoy what you're doing. Make them know that you're enjoying what you're doing. The biggest thing, I think, is uh, people's span, uh, attention span. I mean, years ago, you, as soon as you came out in the street with a guitar and stood there, people were looking at you and waiting, to, you know, forming a circle. Today, the attention span is they're looking at their iPad or they're looking at their phone or they're looking at this and uh, they're walking by and they watch you for five or ten seconds and you bugger off, you know. Uh, and I think that's mainly because if you notice your videos, your advertisements, your, your movies, there's a, there's a change every second. So people are expecting a change, so boom, 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 boom. And then you're out there doing the same thing for about 10, 15 seconds, they walk off. Yeah. So you got to try and get them and hold them for a while, do something. The thing about busking in the old days, you, uh, first of all, it was illegal. So you had, you had very limited time to play. Uh, we used to sit in the cafe, wait till the police did their rounds, and we'd go out and we'd do our 20 or 30 minutes, and that was it. We played once, that was it. Uh, today, it's legal to busk. And you get people out there all day playing from 9 o'clock in the morning to 12 o'clock midnight. So it's, busking as we knew it was a way of life for us. It wasn't going out and just making money and money and money and doing that and selling CDs. It was went out, you played, whatever you made, you made, and you went out and you bought your food and bought your drink and went to the next town and did the same thing. Uh, and also, if somebody was playing and you wanted to play, you wait till they finished and you played after them. Today, they come out and a lot of them want to be there all day. So it's a bit of a uh, hassle. You have to sort of break them in and tell them what's going on. So what are your views on amplification of music like this in markets? You know? I think they should be banned because uh, it, when you have amplification, you're killing probably three or four other spots that people can play at the same time acoustically. Uh, I'm over here now, uh, about maybe uh, 80 feet, 90 feet from them, and you're blasting away, you know. A lot of people don't know how to use an amplifier, that's, that's the thing. It's just, they just jack it up as high as they can go. There are people who do know how to use it, but just enough where you get enough where you can hear what they're playing and get in an area where you're not annoying anyone or, or dis disrupting the area. They don't want to talk. You know, you got to go up and ask them how long they're going to be, what they're going to do, so you can work it out. You know. Yeah. Yeah. She's going to do two more songs, then she's going to take a break. So I'll, I'll do a set then. You know. People don't realize these days about the early busking that places you went to. It wasn't so easy. In in France, for example, the police would usually hold you up against the wall and back you on the back of their legs with their batons and stuff, and then break your instruments up. In Holland, uh, they would take your instruments and then auction them off. In those days, it was illegal to play, and the police were, we always had to be on guard for police because uh, uh, probably about every 20 or 30 minutes they would make their rounds. Anyway, they thought for a gimmick what we do, and it was also done for TV. I think the TV recorded or somebody recorded it on film, uh, and they got dressed up as policemen, and they had three other friends go out and pretend they were playing in the street. They would come up, and they said, "No, no, you know, you're on your way, move it," and they take their instruments, they looked at each other, looked at the instruments, and said, oh, well, go ahead. And they started playing, and they started doing the routine. So you had three policemen all, all doing this, but they, they rented the, um, or hired the, uh, the costumes from uh, a costume shop, 
and got dressed up as policemen. That, that, that went down. That was, that was a big thing for quite a while. Everybody talked about that, yeah. See, they're keeping the rhythm. They're just tapping their feet because the, 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 the way the drum and tambourine and the guitar work. Wait, so if you just played the guitar, well, they just probably stand there and listen to the music, maybe sing along with it. You know, but with the one-man band, they seem to move with the same movement. The trick to the trade is not to concentrate on what you're doing, because uh, I mean yourself or anybody else. If you're listening to music. You're tapping your hands, and you're tapping your feet, and you're moving your head. Well, that's four or five things going on at once, but you're not thinking about it, you're doing it. The same thing, when I, if I do a new song and I'm trying to get the things going, if I concentrate on the drum beat or the tambourine or the guitar, I lose it, I can't keep it. So I just start into the song and just get going with the guitar singing, and then I add the drum on, then add the tambourine, and, just, and then it just starts flowing. Yeah, we, uh, everywhere was asked us, you know, where do you get the most money from, or where do you get money from? Uh, we get it usually from the, the worker, the working class. Uh, you'll find a lot of people who are uh, fairly well to do and up, you know, they, they hold on to their pennies. Well, this is good for me, yeah, good to start off, because a lot of them don't come up this far. Can you tell there's a lot of tourists here this oh, time? Yeah. What's distinctive about them? spend more? Oh, I just, well, just the way they're looking and walking around, you know. Mm -hmm. Usually the locals barrel right into the veggie stand or the first yes. stand. The other one, they're looking at all the, the goodies. Here. They take their time off? Yeah. yeah. Face your audience. Smile. Look like you're enjoying yourself. And some of them you look at, it looks like they're really hating what they're doing, and people pick up on that. If you're happy and enjoy what you're doing, they'll pick up on it, and then it comes back to you.